Hey guys, what's up? Sean here. I know it's been a while since my last video, but I just wanted to update you. It's been a wild last few months here, but in a nutshell, I did Ironman Texas at the end of April. And then as soon as I came back, I moved houses with my fiance. So the last few weeks has been absolutely nuts. But let's uh, recap Ironman Texas as best as we can here. So first of all, uh, this has been a bucket list race of mine for a while. I'm not totally sure why, and I've been bugging my coach Miranda about this for like the last few years, but always in the back of my mind. I've always wanted to go to Texas, and uh, there's an Ironman there that's really well known and talked about and iconic, so why not do both at the same time? That was my logic. Anyways, so it's not a very technical course. However, there's two caveats to this race. Uh, for myself, being a Canadian from up north, um, it's challenging because this race is in April in Texas, so it's really hot and humid, and I'll, I would be tran tra I would be training for all of winter inside. So. I would be lacking outdoor fitness and heat acclimatization. So I did as best as I could. Um, I had, I, I wore extra layers. I did sauna work. I did hot tub stuff to try get used to the heat, but I did as best as I could. Um, I managed to get through the whole training block through the, the whole winter with no injuries, no illnesses completed all the workouts as prescribed. So that was all good going into this race. And so the, the great thing, like overall, I did love the race itself and I love the whole venue of the Woodlands, which is a really convenient place to get to from Toronto. It's a direct flight from YYZ all the way to IAH Houston airport and the Woodlands is about a 30 minute drive north of Houston, and it, it is not what I was imagining at all for Texas. I was picturing like dirt roads, hay, you know, like flying over the road, horses everywhere, but no. The Woodlands was a really, really bougie place. It was really, really nice, like interlock um, uh, sections on the intersections of the road and everything was really well put together. Like the whole little town city thing was like hidden behind trees and it was a really cool experience and I think a lot of people would like it. It's like a really fancy kind of like Rodeo Drive kind of feel that I got. I was really, really impressed. I stayed at the Westin Hotel. That was really, really pricey. <laughs> Probably one of the most expensive hotels I've ever stayed at. Um, but it was worth it. It was like literally right where the start and finish was. So that was pretty uh, convenient. I didn't have to rent any cars at all. Um, just took an Uber from the airport and everything was in walking distance around the Westin Hotel. That was great. Um, really impressed. Like I, I love the area and I, I would totally do the race again now that I know what I was in for. And so uh, prior to the race, this is the first year where uh, Ironman is having the Ironman Pro Series and this is the full, full distance event in that series. And we saw the likes of two-time world champion Patrick Langa, um, defending Texas champion Cat Matthews, and a whole bunch of other great pros like Jocelyn McCauley, Braden Curry, and Matthew Marquois and a whole and Fenella language and the list goes on. So it was a pretty star studded field. And this was actually the biggest race that I have been a part of. The last few races I've been to was like 2000 people or less. This one had 2,900 people because it's a regional championship. It's the North American championship race. So there was extra points on the line and extra Kona World Championship slots. So a lot of people were there. Um, there was never a moment where you felt alone. So that was cool. However, there was really a lot of times where there was a lot of people around you and then 
So there's pros and cons to that, you have to keep in mind. Basically, so the way this went was the last two Ironmans that I did, I really tried to keep to myself. I stayed inside my hotel rooms. I ate all my own food, cooked myself. And I just really tried to stay isolated because I was paranoid of getting sick or ill before the race. So I didn't want to jinx anything. However, this time being my third one, I was like, ah, oh, let's just get the full enchilada, the full Ironman experience. I'm going to attend everything from the pro panel, the welcome banquet, you know, and meet new people, shake hands, high five everyone, get to know other people's stories. And that's what I did this year. And it was so worth it. I got to meet some really cool people from like the UK, um, Gemma, um, and I met Angie Brent who lives in uh, Texas and there was a whole bunch of other people as well and just a lot of people I followed on the tracker and it made the experience really worth it and the, the, the welcome banquet was cool I wish I went to the ones in previous years it's like a full buffet and they're trying to feed 2,900 athletes that's insane like trying to feed one athlete's hard enough I eat I myself eat so much, so imagine how much 2,900 other triathletes eat. It was pretty insane. It was cool to see everyone. It was great. Um, On to the race itself. I prepared pretty much how I did for every other race. Every I had like a checklist of everything I needed to bring, you know, um, pre-race food, race nutrition. Everything was on point. It's just that... It's really, really hard to train for something that you can't actually experience. And my coach told me this too. Other people told me this, but I really wanted to do this race. So why not, right? What is up, everyone? We are here at Ironman Texas in beautiful woodlands near Houston. And I have just racked my bike on number 145 track is ready and I'm actually right in front of the pros so I'm kind of cool in that way just a little bit see you at the race YOLO <laughs> um, the heat as soon as I landed there I could feel it and I was like mm, yep it is hot and humid what am I in for um, you know it is what it is um, the, the, the I think the real kicker for this specific event, and it's happened in previous years, but this year it seemed to be a lot more prevalent. Um, the few days beforehand, the weather was pretty good. Other than the heat, it was pretty calm, like wind-wise. However, on race day, we knew that there was gonna be some insane gusts, and this would affect uh, mainly the bike ride. Uh, so we take, it's two loops of on the Hardy Toll Road going from north to south and then back up and back down. So twice. And we would be facing major headwinds on that ride. So I had to mentally prepare for that. And so did everyone else. I'll get to the bike later. But let's start with the swim. Um, the swim was actually pretty great. That was, it wasn't my fastest swim ever. However, it was the best sighted swim I've done. I've been working on my uh, sighting in open water and then I logged, I think, 3,900 while the actual course with the buoys is supposed to be 3.8 kilometers. So give and take 100, kilometer, uh, 100 meters with the GPS, that was pro my most accurate swim to date. So I was happy in that aspect. And up to halfway, it was actually going to be my fastest full Ironman swim. However, there, halfway in the swim, there's like an arch that we're all supposed to swim under. And that's where the timing mat is for the halfway mark of the swim. So that's about 1.9 uh, kilometers into it. Um, I just, the, everyone was bunching together and I felt someone like just smash into my right shoulder and it felt dislodged and I was like, oh no. Is this the end of the race but I felt like the muscles could still give me the stroke 
So, and it was still rotating. So I was like, oh, okay, I can keep going. Like the muscles didn't hurt. It just felt like something dislodged or something. So I was like, as long as my arm can keep going and pushing and uh, pulling, then keep going until the finish. So uh, actually, so the swim didn't feel super duper long at all. Uh, I've been working on my swim distances and endurance and doing these longer swims doesn't really uh, get me exhausted or gasping for air anymore. I can improve my speed for sure. I have a lot to improve there, but endurance wise and distance wise, I'm good for that. Just need to improve my speed. And then off to the bike, this is where things kind of got nuts. So the first 40 minutes of the bike were still uh, coming out of transition and uh, oh yeah, for transition, I was actually placed uh, right beside the pros where their bikes are. So that was pretty cool. Like, so we'd come in, I'd have to run a long way from the swim exit to get my bike, but then my the bike exit was literally like a few feet away. So that was fun. Um, the first 40 minutes of the bike was actually fine. I was averaging like maybe 30, 32 kilometers per hour, just taking a chill zone two for Ironman pace. However, once I got to the Hardy Toll Road, once I turned onto it from the ramp and I felt that headwind that we were all um, expecting mentally, like there was nothing I, I could do. Like I w it was like going against a brick wall. I think they said the, the headwinds were pretty much 30 to 40 kilometers an hour. And if that was my expected average pace, that's like going nowhere almost. And then it felt like I was going into a wall and just it just seemed like this 20 mile stretch. So it's like 20, 20, 20, 20. It just felt like the first 20 and the second 20 felt like it was taking twice as long. And then when we eventually did make the U-turn, we'd shoot back like maybe 45, 50 kilometers an hour. That part was fine, but that part only lasted like maybe, it felt like 30 minutes or so. So the, the recovery time, to how long it took to go down one way was not proportional and the damage was done already on the first one. And then when we got to recover and then it was like, ah, oh, we have to do it all over again. <laughs> and so it was pretty nuts. And it was the most dangerous bike ride I've ever been on in my whole life and have ever seen. I've never seen so many people crash on and be on the side of the road crying or with a flat tire in my whole life. And there was debris and bottles from all the aid stations just flying all over the road because it was so windy. Like the volunteers, poor volunteers, thank you for all that you do. But the wind was just blowing everything everywhere. It was nuts. I swear half the time on the bike, I could hear ambulances or the mobile um, bike uh, mechanics going up and down the road. You can hear sirens like pretty much the whole time. I was like, whoa, this is insane. And it turned out close to 20, maybe 24% of the people DNF'd, maybe not, maybe not 25%, maybe like 20% of the people DNF'd or crashed out on the bike or didn't make the cutoff. Some didn't make the cutoff as well. Um, it was wild. So me with my poor bike handling skills already and not training at all throughout the, the winter outside, I was just trying to stay away from everyone. And I was actually so happy and glad and grateful and fortunate that I made it off the bike without any injury or flats or mechanical issues. I was like, whoa, not so thank, thank God for that. Ah, yeah, so I was just happy to get off the bike there. Um, it was not my greatest performance at all on the bike, but just happy to get it done. Uh, and then we were on to the run, which is probably the most fun run I've ever been on in my life. Um, it does live up to the hype. It's three loops. It's the most spectator and family friendly run course in the world. Um, and it's in a gorgeous area in the woodlands. You know, you run through the canal, you run through all these fancy houses and mansions. And you go through the iconic and well-regarded Hippie Hollow three times. That's worth it. And just seeing all the people and all the other athletes just having a fun time, even though you can see the pain on their face. But 
it's good. You, you're never alone on this run. There's always so many people, so many people cheering you on. And because it's three loops, you know, you get to see a, a, see people a few times and it's all good. Um, plenty of porta potties if you need it. All the, the gels, pretzels, chips, you name it, everything with Coca-Cola, Red Bull, everything was well stocked at the aid stations. I poured ice on myself the whole time to try and into my tri suit just to stay cool, but I was burning up. Um, wasn't my greatest run ever. I, just, I was just really happy to finish, so. John Chin from Canada. You are an Ironman, John. First timer, Brandon Riley. You are an Ironman. That's what I like to see. So overall, and then when I finished, we get the larger than life Ironman Texas belt buckle medal very unique compared to other races this one can be a belt buckle as well pretty cool huh i like this a lot anyways so this wasn't my best iron man but it also wasn't my worst iron man performance so happy with that i'm just happy i got it done <laughs> i got to cross this iron man texas race off my bucket list i can say i visited texas i did an iron man in texas i survived no injuries no crashes everything was good good stuff and then after the race i went to the awards ceremony where there was another huge buffet for 2900 uh athletes right now starving athletes Actually, I couldn't eat any kind of food right after the race other than a giant bag of Doritos. And I don't know how anyone actually eats the food, like the pizza and stuff that they serve at the finisher tent. I can't down any of that. I could, the only thing I could get down was these uh, Dorito chips. So at least I could get something down. However, next day and a few days after that i was absolutely starving so the buffet at the award ceremony was great got to see a, a, a few more friends there and then i was really sad that my friend from the uk uh Gemma, she I, I learned that she dnf because um someone hit her on the bike from behind and that ended her race um she was really looking forward to that race and uh, that's really tragic. And then I met another guy who was in a, like a sling and he broke his collarbone. I guess he crashed on the bike. People weren't used to the, all the, the headwind and the side crosswinds coming at them so heavily. And also on the tailwind, people aren't used to going 50 kilometers an hour. And then, so I guess some people lost control. He broke his collarbone and he said when he was at the hospital, he was there with like 10 or more other people who also broke their collarbone too. It was a wild ride, as I said. Um, and then, so I just took it easy after that. The, the following day, another pro professional athlete, Joe Skipper, has his infamous beer mile. Um, about 20 athletes came out to this if you were still up to doing any kind of running or moving at all, uh, the diehard triathletes came out to this one who listened to his podcast, Triathlon Mockery. Um, great podcast, by the way, you should listen and subscribe. But being a big fan, I, I headed out there. He, by the way, DNF the, the race because he got to the run and he said he just didn't have it. So even the pros had a tough day. A few of the pros, and after our crashed as well so pretty rough day for everyone um, but the beer mile was fun S surprisingly i could still run like a five 508 minute per kilometer thing for the mile so that was pretty impressive i did not drink any alcohol by the way i just kind of waited at the end of each 200 meter loop that we did uh, to equal a mile but at the end of each 200, everyone would have to chug a, a can of uh, beer. I don't drink alcohol, so I just waited and watched them. I guess I could have brought like some carbonated water or like a Sprite. Maybe that would have been a good idea to recarb up on. But anyways, that was fun. Um, so I did truly live like an Ironman experience here. I, I went to every single event, met so many people. I didn't keep to myself at all. 
I went to everything and tried to socialize as much as possible. And I got that full experience in for once. And it was awesome. I, will I do it again? I'm going to definitely do another Ironman again, but will I do all those other things? Maybe we'll see, but I can, I'm glad to say I did it. It was totally worth it. I would like to say a big thank you to my coach, Miranda Tomlinson of Tomlinson Performance and Wellness. Thank you to my family and friends. Thank you to my fiance, uh, Jenna. And thank you to all the volunteers, race organizers, police officers, and all the other awesome athletes that participated in the race. You're all awesome. Even if your race didn't go as you wanted or you didn't finish, stay in there, try again, never quit, keep on going. And I will update you all. I'll try to be more frequent now that I've moved houses um, finally. And things are still unpacking and we just repainted. It's a totally new location from where I was before. So. I haven't been getting much sleep in the last few weeks, but still training and now um, getting into the summer race season. So the season, <laughs> a lot of my friends here locally, like their season is just starting. My season is just starting again too. However, I've already done a full Ironman. So that's kind of interesting. I got a few weeks off for um, recovery, but it's not that much because I got another half Ironman in a few weeks, maybe, yeah, in Muskoka, then I have another half, maybe another fall, full Ironman, we'll see, and we'll just go from there, and maybe I'll throw in a sprint or two here or there, so it's going to be a busy summer for 2024, and I look forward to making more videos. Peace.